Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage, available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Network, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. I am Skits, and I'm joined by my co-host. We got Tom, and we got our boy Matt from the Weekly Wrestling Podcast. What's going on, gentlemen? What is up? What is going on? We're on a little bit earlier than normally scheduled. Yes, yes, gentlemen, we are on earlier um, due to a request by our good friend, Half a team tremendous, new CZW tag team champion, half of the tag team champs, uh, Mr. Dan Barry. What's going on, man? Nothing. I'm sorry I, I, I altered your timing. Oh, it's all good, man. I mean, this is great. You know, uh, now we don't have to get off super late like uh, like uh, usual. I'm fine with that. <laughs> How's it going, man? Oh, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, it's a nice day out. It's not too humid. Not bad at all. That's how you know you're getting older, is if you start just first thing, it's like, oh, at least the day's nice. <laughs> Man, uh, let's uh, get uh, right into it. Um, let's talk about the, um, you, you, um, you, um, team uh, Tremendous winning uh, the uh, tag team uh, titles at the CZW uh e- uh, match up this uh, past weekend. Yeah. Uh, what an awesome event from what I saw from the GIS. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but let's talk about it. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was really crazy. It was one of those things where, um, you know, people, people can rag on the ECW arena, but uh, it is such a cool atmosphere, and there's so much history in that building. And uh, just, you know, the list of people who perform there. And then to know that, you know, I was in the main event of a show at the ECW Arena, like that, that's amazing to me. Does it does it top the fact a little bit more that you guys defeated three of the top tag teams in professional wrestling and the Beaver Boys in OI4K in the Young Bucks? Yeah, it, it's, you know, one of those things where we the talent was so big in that match and, like, we were the proverbial underdogs going into it that it was a cool moment to be able to to snag a victory against teams that are, that were sort of, they were slated to win. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Definitely the, you guys weren't the uh, hands-on favorite uh, kind of coming into that match as a wild card and really picking up the biggest victory of your careers in that match. Well, yeah, and the other thing was that it was uh, it wasn't even supposed to be a title match. It was originally a three way. So it was supposed to be a three way with us and the Young Bucks and uh, the Beaver Boys. I know why 4K get all you know worked up that they wanted to be in that match too, and then we just happened to get the victory. You know, like it's uh, kind of cool, man. Like it was uh, definitely unexpected for Bill and I. We, yeah, I think you can see the shock in our faces when we win the belt, and that like. Wow, this is weird. They get two fold fold that one that we were now the official CCW champions and two that people actually didn't boo us because we were kind of expecting them to boo us when the Bucks didn't win. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm I'm definitely proud of uh you and Bill for winning the CCW titles. 
Uh, I actually saw you guys at uh, PWG uh, when you guys made your debut, which I'm going to get into in a bit. But I have a uh, question for you. CZW uh, signing on to a, a pay-per-view. Um, you want to talk about uh, your thoughts on that? We literally found out the same, like, maybe five minutes before you guys did. You know, because I know that, uh, you know, he came out and made the announcement. Uh, we were just sitting in the back, and he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, as part of, like, his opening locker room speech, it was like, hey, guys, stick to your times because we're going to be on pay-per-view soon, and uh, it costs, you know, $250,000 if you go over on pay-per-view. And uh, we were like, wait, what? You just slipped past the pay-per-view point. Like, that's that's weird. And he broke it down and explained it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, this will be my uh, first time on official pay pay-per-view, uh, you know, the I, I've been on I pay per view, but you know this is my first time officially on pay per view, and that's gonna be kind of cool, man. Like especially going in as champion, that's uh, yeah. that's pretty badass. Is there any word on when the pay per view event's gonna be taking place? Uh, I've heard October. Um, knowing the CZW schedule, I would assume if it is in October, it would be the second week of October, which I believe is uh, October eighth. Any of you guys made that up? I might have just made that up. Who knows? Uh, October 10th. Um, that's not firm. You know, I'm not, this obviously isn't uh, me being official. Uh, but that's, you know, knowing their schedule and then knowing that they have a pay-per-view coming up. All right, good yeah, to def- I said it's definitely a big deal for CZ Dub. Uh, definitely looking forward to checking out that pay-per-view because uh, I know with Ring of Honor when they came out with theirs I definitely ordered that and I definitely definitely ordered CZW's because you got to support the, the, these guys that you see um, all around the world in, in the independence so I'll definitely uh, definitely definitely order that uh, Tom do you yeah, want to ask a question? Huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity you have to if you can support you know I really hope you do because I mean honestly it's kind of cool yeah. Yeah, man. Um I'm I'm gonna be one of the guys here to uh to get it. So uh Tom, did you want to ask a question? Yeah, uh one of the big events coming up is Beyond Wrestling's American Rana two thousand fifteen, where you and Dan, Team Tremendous, are gonna be facing the best friends. Bill and I, you mean. I think you mean Bill and I, my name is Dan. Yeah. I mean, this is an Americana 14 rematch. Talk, talk about what's been going on in Beyond, because Beyond Wrestling, there's been a little bit of a tension between you and Bill going on in Beyond Wrestling. Uh, it boils down to Bill being frustrated, because we, you know, we keep getting really close to beating people, and then, like, in the last second, something happens, and then I lose. Um, and it's more, I would imagine, just competitive frustration. Uh, people are going to look into it how they want to. Uh, I know that we're both heading into Providence, you know, ready to fight. I mean, he is, you know, he's he's temperamental. He's he's a big guy with an attitude, you know, and sometimes the attitude can be directed at me, uh, and that's part of the deal. That's part of being in a tag team. But you know what? Like, when push comes to shove and that bell rings, I know he's going to be in that corner. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think one of the most interesting things going into this matchup has been the speculation that this could be Chuck Taylor's final match on the indie scene. What do you think about that whole thing going in into the match? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where Chuck is Chuck and you don't, I don't know for certain that it is his final match. You know, like I imagine he's done this before where every now and then he'll just say like, ah, I'm retiring. And, but now I think people, I don't know if he's serious. I haven't talked to him about it. You know, I don't know if he's serious or if it's like, you know, one of his things that he's doing, one of his weird chuckisms that he does. Um, but I'm hoping if it is, then you know, I'll be happy to beat him. It's not going to stop me from from trying to win. Very good, very good. And I think beyond wrestling, I, I think this had so much momentum going into 2015, and now going into. Uh, mid-2015, talk about what Beyond Wrestling just has been doing as a whole company. I feel like they're on fire right now. Uh, Beyond Wrestling is the is the sort of 
I don't know how to describe it. It's such a it's such a unique atmosphere. Um, Beyond Wrestling has momentum because Beyond Wrestling just keeps working hard. You know, it's not like some stroke of luck caused them to do well. It's you know they they go out there and they constantly try and outdo themselves, and I'm part of that. I am I'm happy to say that I am part of the the backbone of a company that is trying desperately to uh, to make a name for itself, and I think that it's sort of a you know, it, you can compare it to indie wrestling as a whole, and even me and Bill, I would say, in that, like, people weren't taking it seriously, but now they have to, because now it's actually doing things. Um, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, I think uh, Beyond Wrestling has made some real big moves uh, this year, and I think that, you know, America Rana will be the, the culmination of those big moves. Definitely, without a doubt. Uh I'll throw in a few plugs for them because I think I have to. LookMonNoFans.com, SmartMarkVideo.com. Go out and support it. Beyond Wrestling has been tremendous, no pun intended. At Beyond Wrestling on Twitter, too. Of course, of course. Yeah. All right, um, Pat, Also, oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, Talk over um, yourself. Yeah, Dan, I actually want to talk about... Um, you uh, and uh, Bill making you guys a debut at DDT4, which I happened to, happened to be there. And I believe you guys were the first team to be announced uh, to be uh, in DDT4, which was a big deal. I'm pretty sure uh, me and uh, Matt, I believe we were on Xbox at the time, and we both uh, just went crazy when we saw you guys uh, got announced. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, very, very well deserved. We, it was, uh, I gotta tell you, like, the way that all worked out was so crazy, like, uh, you know, I was, I was, I had just gotten home from something, I think I had comedy, and I got an email, and it was, uh, it was, uh, PWG, and they go, hey, are you guys free this day? So I immediately just, like, called Bill, I was like, look, we're free this day, I don't care what you have going on, you're making it go away, and, uh. You know, he's in typical Bill fashion. He's like, absolutely. And uh, we we agreed. And uh, he goes, okay, as soon as I agreed, he goes, all right, just send me your names and your birthdays so we can find out your flight information. I'm like, sure. That was the entire conversation. I went to bed shortly thereafter because I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up to legitimately hundreds of mentions and tweets and... Uh, I went to their announcement on their page, and it had, like, 200-something retweets. Like, it was just, like, it blew up. It was one of their, uh, you know, not to whatever, it was one of their bigger announcements of that show. It was the the amount of attention that we got getting into it. Um, it was cool, man, because it was, like, we were the first team announced. Then when you get to GET4, we were the first team to walk through the curtain in the first match on the show. And it was, like, it was essentially was awesome, as if... By the way. Thank that you. was awesome, by the way. I appreciate that. I do. Uh, it was it was a cool experience. It was one of those moments where I, I felt like PWG was like, uh, you're going to go out there and you're going to sink or swim and we're not trying to help you. And I was like, perfect. That's when I am the best. That's when I feel the most comfortable is when I have something to prove. And uh, I think that we, you know, we just got announced for three men this, which is next week. And uh, I think we proved that we can hang in PWG. Uh, especially against the Beaver Boys, who are two of my, you know, good buddies. So I'm glad that that's the match that I got. And and uh, now you guys are going against the world's cutest tag team, which is Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae. Uh, talk about that real quick. Well, we wrestled them before. We wrestled them at WSU for uh, when Beyond Wrestling was part owner of WSU. Uh, they did an inter-promotional uh, match. And... Uh, I for you gotta you gotta acknowledge both the talent of Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae. Like Candice LeRae is somebody who uh, can take punishment, and Joey Ryan is, is a guy who's test who stood the test of time as far as pro wrestling goes. You know, uh, the guy's been all over. The guy's been at it for quite a while. Yeah, he's you know he's an old war horse, but he's somebody who constantly gets attention. Uh, I think the big thing, the big takeaway is, you know, these guys are. They just lost their their tag titles. They just got beat up by uh, by the new Mount Rushmore. You know, uh, they're not. Uh, I don't that think was crazy, by the way. 
Yeah, I don't think they're as confident as they uh, as they were probably going into DET four. Um, you know, they've been on a little bit of a of a of a beating. So, you know, not to capitalize, but you know, I want to get to that pay window. You know, so I gotta we gotta do what we gotta do to try and secure a victory over the world's cutest tag team, or as Bill calls them, the other world's cutest tag team, because he believes that we are the world's cutest tag team. <laughs> I have one more question. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but um, are you guys now regulars on the PWG roster? Um, I don't know that I can confirm or deny it. Um, we were told, you know, uh, we were they emailed us after DT4. Uh, we were offered Mystery Vortex, but we couldn't do it. Um, and then we took uh, Three Mendes, and he said, like, yeah, you guys – you guys killed it, you know, like, you know, so I, 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 I feel like if we have another good showing this month, we will be as regular as we could possibly be. Um, my goal is to work there every single show. Uh, it's up to me to make that happen. And that's what I'm going to, we're going to try and do. Definitely. I'm going to pass the mic on to Matt. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, talk a little bit about how you and Bill ended up getting together for Team Tremendous in the first place. That's something I wanted to know. Well, I met Bill at a show, an FTW show in Long Island, uh, probably a couple months before he got signed. And he was just doing a, 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 a spot on that show. And he walked in and he was like, you know, the one thing about the, 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 the show is the, the, the company was FTW. And uh, they they weren't, you know, they weren't like – get dressed up and go to these shows. Like, he was used to, like, hearing how you should show up at WWE events, and et cetera, et cetera. So he was wearing, like, dress pants and a dress shirt. You could tell he was, like, really uncomfortable. So I walked over to me and uh, my old tag partner, Ken Skane, we walked up to him and we're like, uh, you don't belong here. And we were like, let's go to a bar. And so we took him to a bar. Um, and then uh, we just became friends. We were just buddies, and then after that, uh, he got he was signed, and he was taken off. He was, he was unsigned, and after he got unsigned, he, uh, you know, he came over and he asked if we could be part of the Team Tremendous group, which was me, him, and Ken Scampy. And uh, then Scampy retired, and then me and Bill decided we'd be a tag team. And then we became cops because I convinced him that it'd be a fun idea to do, even though he didn't want to do it. <laughs> And this brings us to this Saturday's House of Hardcore 9 show in Toronto. Talk a little bit about that opportunity. I believe your debut for the House of Hardcore promotion. No, it is not actually our debut. We've been on, I think we we're on 6, 7, and 8. Uh, oh, the first that shows you how much I suck. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Uh, the vignettes leading into the House of Hardcore show have shown us uh, if you have Fight Network uh, on your Roku player, on your cable system, uh, they've shown that me and Bill, the angle that we have going on over there, uh, is sort of that of the guys who are just showing up, uh, who are two guys who obviously don't look like wrestlers, who are going to try and be wrestlers. Um, the Help Hogger Show is so, it's so big, first off. It is huge. Uh, the amount of paperwork I have to bring across the border with me um, to even be on this show is crazy. Uh, we have uh, contracts with both uh, House of Hardcore and FightNet um, to be on the show. We uh, it, it's, it's going to be streamed live on the fight on Fight Network and on the Roku app FightNet. It'll also be on iPayPerview. Uh, it's a huge show. Uh, you know, there's no two ways about it. It's a show that you know uh, it already has a huge pre-sale. It's, uh, it's in a really big hockey arena. Uh, you know, it's going to be fun, man. I, I Having never been to Toronto, I am so pumped to be at this show. Honestly, we're sitting, uh, the Weekly Rest Podcast crew going to be sitting front row for it, so we're really excited. Any word on what you guys will be doing for the event, or is that something that's kind of on the hush-hush? I have, I have uh, no word on what our match is, and that's what Tommy likes to do to Bill and I specifically. Um He'll say, like, look, you're booked. See you there. And then we show up, and he'll just tell us what's going on. Um, you know, we're not, you know, I, I think it's sort of a another sink or swim thing where Tommy likes us, uh, and Tommy wants us to do well, but he's not going to coddle us. He's going to give us the opportunity 
to, to do what we do, but he's not going to be nice about it. It, it like is. It, here's your opportunity. Go make go make a fan out of a thousand people. And that's what we're, like that's it. our goal. I like it. I like it. Uh, Tom, take it away, man. Yeah, I I wanted to show some love to a company that I've seen many times over near me, Interspecies Wrestling, and you guys, I would have to argue, are probably the most popular guys there. Talk about Interspecies, and now Interspecies coming back, Halloween night, candy and razor blades. I mean, just talk about the whole environment of Interspecies and what you guys are doing there. Interspecies Wrestling was a company that, it was the reason that I'm not, Interspecies Wrestling is hands down the reason that I'm still wrestling today. Hands down. They are the the people I have to credit for that. Uh, they booked me because my name was Dan Barry and they were wrestling in Danbury. And uh, that was going to be one of my last string of shows, my first show for them. I was like on my way out. I was done. And uh, they basically brought me in to be fodder, I guess, for one of their guys. And I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. He'll just, he'll just have a whatever match and it'll be fine. And I was like, no. I'm like, I have to do something different. So then I decided to go crazy, and that's, uh, they brought me back. Interspecies Wrestling is also the, the beginning of Team Tremendous. It is, uh, we came out as the professional cop gimmick that we are now um, on their show. And they've given us, they basically said, do whatever you want. You guys can do whatever you want, come up with something. And so... We didn't tell them exactly what we were doing. We just came out dressed like that, and they let it happen, and uh, they let the weirdness take over. And if you like pro wrestling or you don't like pro wrestling, you'll like Interspecies Wrestling. It's got everything you could ever possibly want. It's adult humor-themed pro wrestling without, like, pornography. Although I will say uh, I've seen Sexy Eddie's uh, wiener more than I care to. Um, Not necessarily... (laughs) Not necessarily in the ring, but you know, in general, as a as a <laughs> as the standard I have, I've seen a lot of it. Um, but it is awesome, and it's it's so cool. I mean, without a doubt, it's it's such a different environment. And I can remember at the Interspecies show, uh, Boner Jam Three, back in February, you actually took a pretty nasty fall trying to go for that uh, signature corkscrew tope con hello and. You seem to kind of uh, ding your shoulder up, and I saw the pictures on Twitter, and you look like uh, you look like you're banged up a little bit from that. Was that uh, was that something that you maybe reconsidered not doing that anymore? Because you, you're keeping on doing it, but was that one moment where you're like, maybe I shouldn't do it anymore? No. Uh, anytime I get hurt doing something, my next goal to do it is to do it the next match I go out. Um, except for one move that I'm never going to do again. But that one, uh, that one move would be the uh, the fallaway slam moonsault to the outside of the ring, where I landed on top of my head and nearly died. But uh, the shoulder, uh, I suffered essentially. I, my shoulder is always kind of in bad. Um, the left one, I heard it originally wrestling. Uh, just to throw this back, uh, the SAT. I went for a Hurricane Rana and I planted my elbow and it just popped out of the shoulder socket. Um, I think this re-aggravated it. I sprained the AC joint, and I did a number on the ligament. Uh, no surgery required, but I was told not to use the arm. So for about three weeks, I did not use my left arm. But I obviously can't stop to do that. I'm a pro wrestler. Uh, I have to wrestle. And that's that's it. You know, you, 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 you muscle through it. You, uh, you, you, know, you grit your teeth, and you eat shit for a little bit. Yeah, so I, I I can remember the reaction just when you landed. People were just like, oh, he's automatically hurt. But you and Dan went out there and busted your butt that night. And that was the one time where I did got to meet you, and you are a stand-up, very cool guy. And I can't wait until Halloween night where Interspecies returns. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Uh, we, we just agreed to do it. We, uh, Halloween's a big night for Bill. Uh, that's his favorite night of the year, and uh, you know, for him to wrestle on it's pretty cool. He's pretty excited about it, and we might come out in costume. Who knows? 
<laughs> I got a question talking about tournament for tomorrow. It was about eight months ago. You guys defeated the Gentleman's Club, the Juicy Product, and the Young Buck in the same night to win the tournament. Talk a little bit about that and what that did for you guys. Well, I'll put it in perspective. We beat the Gentleman's Club. Then we made the Juicy Product break up because we beat them so quickly. And then we beat the Young Bucks <laughs> in the main event of the show. Um, that was a crazy, crazy night. Um... We had, I wrestled the night before in the main event, and I was a five-on-five five match, and the, the, it was just mayhem. Uh, I wrestled for something like 35 minutes the night before, and I was the last person eliminated. And then we came out to face um, the, the Gentleman's Club, which was Chuck Taylor and uh, Orange Cassidy and the Swamp Monster. It was just a cool night. Like It was make or break for Team Brandis. And you guys definitely made it. You guys definitely made it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. I have one more question, Dan, because I know you uh, had to go. Um, status with Team Tremendous returning to Evolve. Because uh, I know they just had a couple uh, events uh, this past weekend. And uh, no Team Tremendous. Uh, is there a possibility uh, we'll see you guys back uh, over there? Working with them. Well, I'll, I'll put any like negative rumors to rest. We are on very good terms with Gabe. Um, there has been expressed interest, except that it's just the time frames haven't worked out. Um, you know, we uh, are in a very fortunate circumstance where we are booked fairly far in advance now, which is great. But it leaves, you know, when Gabe wants a tag team and he thinks of us, you know, three weeks before, you know, there's a chance that we are unable to do it. Um, Gabe, uh, our experience at Evolve has been awesome. We uh, we had the one match that was fun, enjoyable. Uh, we got along with everybody in the back. We know most of the guys in the back at this point because through you know all the other companies we wrestle for with them. Um, Evolve is a fun company to work for as a wrestler, and I have no doubt we'll be back there. It's just a matter of when. Definitely, man. Uh, I wish you could stay on longer so we could talk more with you. But uh, for those that do not know, uh, he's actually going to be in the rain tonight. Uh, you want to tell the folks where you're going to be? So uh, maybe uh, if they're close uh, to you, uh, come down and uh, check you out. Well, they they better be very close because I'm in Levittown, New York, and the show starts in about 30 minutes. Uh, it is uh, – I was doing stand-up this evening at Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown, New York, uh, 8 o'clock show. If you can't make it there or you live nowhere near Levittown, fear not. Uh, I'll be at House of Hardcore this Saturday in Toronto at the Ted Reeves Arena. Uh, doors open at 6 p.m. Uh, next week, I'll be in PWG in Reseda, California on Friday. Whoa, and then whoa. on Sunday, I'm, <laughs> yeah, then on Sunday I'm, at, uh, I'm in Providence, Rhode Island for Beyond Wrestling's American Rana 15. Uh, follow me on Twitter. At the Dan Barry, you can follow Bill also at WWE Dutch, and uh, yeah, we, you can find out where we're gonna be from now on, or you can just you know message me and have a conversation. I'm fairly approachable. Definitely, man. Um, I get weirdos who send me nudes now, uh, which I'm what? not. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, so you know. You know, maybe maybe ask me before you do it. How about that? That's where I'll draw the line because I just get them unrequited now, and it's very weird uh, because I'll be in the middle of work at a meeting, and I will randomly get a nude photo of somebody I did not ask for. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with those ring rats out there? You guys need to stop it. <laughs> oh, it's not just ring rats. It's also random people, random dudes, random women. It's It's a thing. Whatever. I mean... Cool that you like your body, you know, but maybe just ask first. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> um, one more thing, because I didn't hear you uh, throw out uh, a uh, pro wrestling tea store. Do you have a pro wrestling uh, tea store for Team Tremendous? Yes, uh, yes, we do, and I'm sorry I did not uh, pro uh, advertise that, mostly because I get profit from it. I should be advertising it. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Team Tremendous. Uh yeah, you can buy up to six shirts there, and they're all pretty awesome. Um, the more you buy, the more we can make. That's the way I, I always pitch it. We can make some pretty cool shirts, or we can just leave those six up there. 
Uh, your call. It's up to the fans. You guys heard the man. Go so, go uh, show some love and uh, buy a Team Tremendous T-shirt. I'm I'm gonna buy one uh, at the PWG show. So and we'll meet up. So uh, yeah, we just ordered a whole bunch boy. of new ones, and we have we only have ten copies of one of the shirts. So you have to look. You have to get it. So it's a the unique opportunity. And hopefully, my boy Matt can meet you at the House of Harker Shore. So we're looking That's forward to meeting you. That happen. Yeah, absolutely. Just come up and introduce yourself. We're pretty, we're pretty approachable. Absolutely, dudes. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Hey, thank, thank you guys so much. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dan Barry, one half of Team Tremendous. Cool dude. I wish we could talk to him long with. Actually, he has a comedy show tonight. I thought he had a match. I botched right there. It's all good. <laughs> hey, at least we all botched once, right? Right. <laughs> this is about to be a show, huh? You know what? And at the end of the day, you could look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, at least I'm not Alex Riley. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that was oh, shucky, ducky, quack, quack. I, yeah, like I, I, said, I, I took the shots on purpose. Guy is a bum. Certified, Look, you know how hey, I don't praise hey, a certified hey, no, don't, don't, Alex don't, Riley is a certified no. bum. And before we even don't get even any wish, further don't with don't this show, your, at True God Immortal, he is not good. No. You zip it. Don't stop it, guys. Let's not let's not waste our time on Alex Riley. Let's talk about some elite people because this is the Elite Podcast Network, and we talk about elite wrestlers, and that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, <laughs> we don't talk about bums on the Elite Podcast Network. We talk about elite that's people, and that's what we're gonna keep doing. Elite Podcast Network produces elite interviews, and Team Tremendous Elite Interview. Definitely, we want both of them on on uh, a show. It doesn't matter if it's here on WH or WWP or Russell Chat, or whatever. We just want want to talk to some elite people. And that's what we do. Elite podcast net followers. Uh, but uh, let's talk some wrestling. How about that? Because uh, for those that do not know, um, Ring of Honor wrestling. It's actually Friday in Las Vegas, California. No, How much are you kicking I yourself botched, in the ass? I botched ass. again. I botched again. How much are you, again. How much are you kicking better. yourself in the ass for not being able to hey. go to this show in Vegas? I got to ask. Hey, it is what it is, dude. I'm not even tripping. You know, I went to one regular body show in Vegas. Um, But it is what it is, dude. You know, I'm actually going to go to a show that Friday. Um, I'm going to a Brian Kendrick show. Uh, his uh, promotion that day. I wonder day. if he so, will be there. Nah, I doubt it. She's in, um, <laughs> she, she's, she's, she's at a taping. <laughs> so I doubt it. Oh, but, man. uh, if Eva Reed was there, that would be cool. My boy Eli Everfire would be there. So, Eli um, Everfire, one of the top talents in the area. So check him out at the show on Friday. I'm sure Skits will be show- throwing out some plugs later on. Your, guess who else is going to be there? Your boy, Comrade. Comrade's going to be there. Comrade, my boy, yes. <laughs> Comrade. Comrade is going to be there. Uh, we'll, uh, let's talk about Ring of Honor, though. I, uh, I almost thought my mic went out, but it didn't. It was a fucking dog outside. Um, shout out to Oscar, by the way. He called and hung up. I have no idea why, but, I mean, that's what it is. I, You know why? Because... I guess uh, when Tom was like, "Go ahead, Matt," he, he wanted to go next, so he got kind of <laughs> he, he got mad. So he oh, cheesed. Okay. okay. Um, let me uh pull up the card for Ring of Honor. Uh, and while you TV. do that, I'm gonna throw in a cheap plug because uh, I just looked at it do that. and five, almost 500 views on our YouTube. Our interview with Global Force Wrestling founder Jeff Jarrett. Highly recommend checking it out. We're getting some uh, media coverage because of it too. So really cool. Thanks to all the uh, the sites that have covered it thus far. Yeah, Double J uh, doing big things. Uh, shout out to him. Shout Global out to Force, Scott Moore. Some big things going on with them, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm sure. Uh, 
this Ring of Honor card is something else, though. Since we also throwing out plugs, um, just fucking, uh, what I need people to do, if you haven't, you need to go ahead and subscribe to Weekly Wrestling Podcast and Wrestling Heads, both, uh, our YouTubes, because this is the best thing to do right about now. But, just like you said, Ring of Honor, uh, it's basically a TV title, uh, I wouldn't say, is it a tournament? Yeah, it is. A it is a, it's a mini tournament, yeah, in the same night. They're doing, like, three triple threat matches, all the winners, and another triple threat to crown the number one contender. You guys you guys want to do some um, predictions, too? Let's, let's, let's predict like, winners, too. And let's I know, do it. Um, I know PD, um, PW Ponderers, they'll probably have the uh, results up. So, But Christopher Daniels, um, isn't he is half of the Ring of Honor Tag Champs. He is actually in this tournament going against Mark Briscoe. If I had to choose on this one, I'm going to go Mark Briscoe. The only reason why, because, uh, you know, Jay Lethal, you know, he already beat Jay Briscoe. They might want to have those two, you know, go at it, you know, just for, you know, storyline sakes. That's just Ring of Honor for you. Yeah, that was a very weird booking. Uh, plan for water, but continue on. I don't know. I, I feel like it could go either way with this one because I feel like it's you, you can't have both of the tag team champs lose in this tournament. You have to have one person at least go over to you know to keep them at least looking strong in singles competition. So I think Daniels goes over Mark Bristow on this one. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. That's interesting. Uh, Bobby Fish, Matt Taven. Uh, I think Bobby Fish is a killer, and Matt Taven is a killer too. When he comes to singles wrestling, uh, those two have those two. I can see those two having a great match. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go Bobby Fish because Matt Taven and uh, uh, you know. Mr. Mike Mike uh, Bennett, they got some, something magical going on. People shit on the kingdom, but that's something magical right now going on for the. I, I see what you did there, kingdom magical. Uh, I, I got you. Um, <laughs> but uh, Bobby Fish and Matt Taven, I feel this is gonna be a really really good singles match up here. Um, I feel like the same thing with you. I feel like Bobby Fish is gonna win, and I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, kind of going out on a limb here, saying Bobby Fish is gonna win this whole tournament. Yeah, I got to agree with that, you know. It, it it just seems like that Red Dragon is getting to the stages where sooner or later they're going to stop being a team. I know they have a big tag team match coming up at Field of Honor against Nakamura and Jay Lethal. But I feel like once that's done, they're going to kind of start going their separate ways. Um, and it would make sense, you know, put put a title on Bobby Fish. Um, you know, been, he's been in Ring of Honor for a while. It would be someone that can keep the prestige of the title going. So it, w- it would be a perfect sense. So I think Bobby Fish goes over Matt Taven on this one. Hmm. Interesting. Frankie Kazarian versus ACH. I see ACH going over on this one. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, you know, ACH has been, you know, Losing a lot of matches lately or whatnot, but uh, I see CH winning uh, this match with Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, like we were already talking about uh, with one of the tag champs having to go over with the other one not going over. I feel like ACH is going over as well, but he's going to end up losing in the end. Uh, I don't know whether Adam Page or the decade will get involved or whatever it will be, but uh, I don't see ACH winning this tournament, unfortunately. And like I said before, I feel like uh, his days in Ring of Honor are coming up to being over. Yeah, and it's it's really weird because I think for a while we thought that ACH was going to take the TV title off of Jay Lethal because we knew a push was coming for Jay Lethal sooner or later. And a lot of people were just, I think, under the impression that ACH was the perfect guy to take the title off of Jay Lethal going into Jay Lethal's main event push. But um, apparently that didn't come into fruition and... A lot of people are very confused by the way ACH, you know, is being 
you know, using Ring of Honor because he's in a lot of big showcase matches, but not a lot going on with him storyline wise. But I think uh, in this tournament he goes over Frankie Kazarian. But it's just going to be interesting to see how ACH is going to be booked going forward because you know you you think there's going to be momentum for him, and then you know. it comes to a halt, and then it stops, and then it starts again. And you think something's going to happen, but then it stops. So, I don't know what's up with ACH and Ring of Honor. What the uh, hell? I'm going to just... Uh, yeah, I got some news to say in a minute, too, but we're going to hold that. I think yeah, we're you saw that, that, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about that in a minute. But, um... I don't know. I see ACH winning this whole thing. I know you guys are seeing what you see, but I think they're going to give him a bone and they're going to give ACH the win. He, they got to have a face uh, go over. And Bobby Fish is kind of a hill in Ring of Honor, so I see ACH going over. I, I'd i have to disagree with that. I feel like Red Dragon, both Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, have kind of gotten a lot of fan support over the last, I'd say, six to eight months. A lot of people... You know, they get some of the biggest reactions at Ring of Honor shows. So, I don't know if I would say Bobby Fish is a heel just now. I think eventually, like I said, when Red Dragon kind of goes their separate ways, he goes back to being a heel because um, that's just his nature. That's what he does best. But for right now, I don't see him really as, like, uh, a big-time heel. I think, like I said, with with what Red Dragon's been doing and what Bobby Fish, you know, going over to New Japan for Best of the Super Juniors. A lot of people are uh, kind of riding the Bobby Fish bandwagon. Yeah, I don't know. That, I mean, I'm going ACH. Uh, I'm not going to change my mind. So I think ACH goes over. Uh, I think they, he's kind of – he's basically – it's not fucking up. I mean, he, he hasn't been fucking up lately. I think they're going to give him a bone. I don't know when his contract runs out, but I'm going ACH. And he's been doing big things besides Ring of Honor. You know, he's been doing Mexico, wrestling and stuff. You know, he's been doing a lot of good things lately when it comes to wrestling, period. So I'm going to go ACH. I'm definitely with what I said in the first place. I'm going Bobby Fish. Uh, one half of the greatest team on God's green earth is going to win this tag team. Uh, I should say this television championship tournament, and I feel like we may be seeing our next TV champion in Bobby Fish. Nothing against Bobby Fish. I got love, but I see ACH winning this. But we'll see. Uh, once once uh, Saturday over, and uh, on Monday we probably have Ring of Honor. Either we can say that for Thursday, and we'll probably have an argument, and uh, or I said so uh, type of situation. How we are here on the Elite Podcast Network. But uh, how about this matchup? We just got announced out of nowhere. Silas Young going against SoCal representative, probably the best wrestler in SoCal right now, Willie Mack. Really, just out of nowhere. Um, I wasn't expecting Willie Mack to be debuting in Ring of Honor anytime soon. I saw his tweet uh, a little bit ago saying, uh, boom, got some big things coming this weekend, something like that. I was like, okay, maybe he's going to – uh, maybe going somewhere else. I know TNA is taping soon, so maybe I was thinking that as well. Uh, maybe some people, Force or some shit. <laughs> yeah, some people were thinking Global Force as well. Maybe WWE, maybe NXT with the taping speed tonight. But no, it was Ring of Honor Willie Mack was talking about. And big opportunity for Willie Mack here. I got to wonder who went to bat for him. as uh, I don't think he's really done any of the Ring of Honor trial camps, so... Uh, definitely very interesting situation. Hopefully it works out for him because uh, he's one of those think, dudes right I already now. think it's a big deal because he knows a lot of guys in the locker too already. So he'll yeah. know in the ring of honor. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge, huge opportunity for Willie Mack. And I was generally surprised that he was, uh, you know, booked for the show. But, you know, big, big props for Willie Mack. So underutilized, I think, by a lot of companies, including PWG. I think PWG, you know, you go back a couple of years ago and Willie Mack arguably was one of the most popular guys there and you, you thought that he could have easily become PWG world champ. Um, but, of course, uh, that didn't happen and, you know, he has uh, vented his frustration at PWG on Twitter as of recently. 
So it's a good opportunity. Can't wait to see how he does. Can't wait to see if this becomes something uh, more permanent. But uh, like I said, even if it's a one-time thing, it's it's great for Willie. Definitely. Uh, we got uh, my boy Beretta, and uh, you got uh, sorry, uh, my phone just went off. You got basically you got the uh, Vice. Vice is going against the Bucks, so. RPG Vice, yeah, Rocky Romero Beretta against the Young Bucks. Should be fun. Uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's I don't gonna care, be interesting I don't care to see said. how they do this matchup because we've seen this matchup done in New Japan, but obviously I think the two companies are very separate on how they do these type of tag team matchups. Um, but it still should be it should be great. Um, good to see the Pongi Vice kind of make it more of a regular appearance in Ring of Honor now. So it should be it should be great stuff. Um you know, There's a lot of good teams awesome. in the Ring of Honor tag team division right now. I mean you got two solid uh tag team matches on this show. Obviously the big random main event I wouldn't call that a a solid tag team match just because of the throw together team. Not not anything against towns, but uh the real tag team division like just saying, like, you got Red Dragon, you got RPG Vice, the Young Bucks, the Kingdom, the Addiction, the Decade. Uh, there's a, quite a lot of teams in that division right now. So, uh, really but you good know to what's see funny, the water finally funny, paying attention to it. It's funny that you said because tag team divisions are never has or nothing. I wouldn't say like that. that I was saying a little while ago it was kind of lacking. When Red Dragon was champions, I mean, there was no challengers really for the titles and it was kind of a, a, well, a stale division that's for a little when, bit what's the name? that's when Raymond Rowe got hurt so yeah, you're right. had nobody yeah and you have and to that also was before the kingdom was together yeah no such to think now now that the Ring of Honor World title is off of Jay Briscoe um, probably we're going to see the Briscoe brothers teaming up I think more than we've seen in the past year and, you know, War Machine is back doing stuff. Killer Elite Squad is being booked more in Ring of Honor. So Tag Team Division definitely picking up a lot of momentum in Ring of Honor when, uh, you know, I know we were talking about it for a while where it was definitely lacking. We were def- you know, Red Dragon was basically the only team. And then, you know, you, you they would throw the Young Bucks in every every couple months, and that was really it. Other than that, there wasn't much going on. But now there's the kingdom, the addiction, um, all those teams that we mentioned. It's 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 great stuff, and hopefully they can you know you can never have too much tag teams. I think because there's always new opportunities and new opponents. So hopefully Ring of Honor keeps uh, keeps up the momentum in the tag team division. I gotta ask you guys before yeah. we get off the kingdom note. Uh, Murray Canellis set to make a special announcement. Do you guys think this is going to be a Dixie Carter type announcement where it's just going to fall flat out of its face? Or do you think it's going to be something where it's actually going to make the kingdom worthwhile? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm sit back and relax. Just wait and see what happens. I don't want to make any uh, wrong uh, calls here. Yeah, I mean... I think it's, it has to be something somewhat significant. I wouldn't see it as like a Dixie Carter type announcement where it's just going to turn out to be nothing and the hype was basically, you know, all for nothing and then the crowd gets disappointed and all the fans get disappointed. I think it's going to be something pretty significant. What it may be, I have no idea. Um, who knows? Who knows? Like I said, there's been a... There's been some tension in the kingdom, so maybe a new member gets revealed into the kingdom and uh, a member gets kicked out. Who knows? That's, I think that's the point of uh, you know watching the video on demand when they come out. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see what happens with that one. Uh, also, with Ring of Honor, uh, you have Jay Lethal, Austin Air- and Moose versus Jay Briscoe, Dalton Castle, and Kyle O'Reilly. Now that 
team with Darden Castle and Ky- with teaming up with Kyle O'Reilly and Jay Briscoe is kind of weird. But hey, Darden Castle, you're in a big matchup. Yeah, really, really interesting matchup with this Las Vegas wildcard six man match. We have, like you said, the Brick of Honor undisputed champion, as he's calling himself, Jay Lethal, teaming up with the returning Austerics and Moose to take on the former world champion, Jay Briscoe, former tag team champion in Kyle Riley, and the party peacock, Dalton Castle. I probably, and Kyle Riley said it himself in the promo video for the match, probably one of the weirdest put together matches in Ring of Honor history, but the talent in this contest is just ridiculous. And I expect this match to be unbelievable. Now coming to predictions, I have no idea what to say for this contest. Maybe they set up Kyle Riley challenging for the Ring of Honor world title. Maybe they set up Dalton Castle challenging for the TV title. I really don't know what to expect in this contest. Just please avoid Jay Briscoe. I don't need to see him in the world title picture anymore. It's it's really interesting because it is a very kind of odd matchup. But when you look at it, it kind of makes sense in that you have the up-and-comers in Moose and Dalton Castle going against each other. You have now the soon-to-be main eventers and faces of the company in Jay Lethal and Kyle O'Reilly. And then you have the kind of Ring of Honor originals, the people that helped build the company, MJ Briscoe and Austin Aries, going on opposite sides of the fence. So it, it makes sense if you look at it from that standpoint. But, um, yeah, I mean, to be really entertaining, lots of fun. Um, can't wait to see all the all the different spots that these guys can do. So much possibility with the, with this matchup. Yeah, with well, Austin Aries too making his return to Ring of Honor, so he's definitely gonna go all out. So you guys feel like he's gonna be a on the independent scene for a little while? Is he gonna be one of those guys, kind of like Samoa Joe, that kind of just transitions to WWE after a couple months? That's a pot. I don't know. That's a big. That's a good question. I mean, he could do both. He can, you know, be. I, I wouldn't say like another um, AJ Styles. Or he could be another Samoa Joe. What I mean by another AJ Styles, how AJ he did independence and he did a company that's super known, like New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, like he can do Ring of Honor, that's super known. Or he could do what Chris Hero did. You know, just go everywhere. I haven't seen nothing announced with him going everywhere yet. So who knows? That's that's just like uh, let's sit back and relax and wait to see to 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 you do that first Ring of Honor show. Yeah, and it's all going to depend on WWE's interest in Austin Aries because when Samojo left TNA, I bet if you ask most wrestling fans if Samojo is going to go to WWE, 99 would say no way in hell. But he's there now, and he's doing great stuff. So at this point, you never know. Austin Aries could end up in WWE. That's a very real possibility. It's just um, what's the interest level? And you have to think that, you know, with Kevin Owens going to the main roster, Sami Zayn out injured, he's probably going to join the main roster when he comes back. Today with Tommy being injured, WWE wants to stack that NXT roster and eventually that main event roster as much as they can. So they see a big name like Austin Aries, they probably want to grab him up. I, like I said, but I don't know. I don't know if that's something that WWE wants to do. Speaking of I NXT, think, uh, you, want, you say, want to go here, Skits? Hold on, we have to, let's finish this one more match and then we can go ahead. Um, oh, there's another match? Gonna, match? Yeah, one more match. We didn't mention. I was going to say one more thing about the whole um, Austin Aries thing. Uh, I definitely agree with Tom when he said, really want more indie names. Austin Aries I think that's a big name to go. I think that's why we're going to see a lot of those guys leave the independency like we've been talking about, the Johnny Garganos, the Vic Six, the Chuck Taylors, the Etcetras, just because of WWE wanting so many names to start selling the NXT brand as a major I product. I think that's not a bad deal either. Especially with them doing big arenas like the Barclays Center the day before SummerSlam. Unreal. I don't think that's a bad deal of getting more indie names. 
uh, because you know why? Right, because now I guess the guys in the end that are not star names yet to step their game up and get into that main that main event slot when it comes to the indies. So, I, I will say for at least the WWE and live products, for sure that's going to be something because Gabe losing a lot of his top talent there with that those signings. Yeah, and uh, we still don't we still don't really know who's signed or who's not signed. Um, I think a lot of people are speculating Chuck Taylor because he announced his retirement, quote unquote. And I did notice that he deleted all of his tweets from his Twitter account which uh, maybe somebody else should have done when they did their WWE tryout. But, um, you know, you know, Gargano had the dark match. We don't know about the Usyk and Gulak. But I think that there's so much talent on the indie scene that it can be replenished so easily. Yeah, you're losing big stars like Gargano and Usyk who have built their name up and built these companies up. But there's so much talent that you could just easily throw in another name and it's not like people are going to stop going to the shows. All righty, um, I have one more match. Adam Cole, Bebe, and Mike Bennett teaming up the War Machine. That's the last yeah, match co- that we Did we cover this? No, we didn't. And yeah, there's also one more match that we didn't mention as well, but we'll mention after. Yeah, very... Very interesting to see what's going to happen with Adam Cole and Mike Bennett in this match. Obviously, Ring of Honor's been building up the fact that Adam Cole seems to be kind of breaking away from the kingdom. And War Machine's, you know, been on a path of destruction, definitely looking like the next number one contender for the tag titles. So, should be a very good match. Very interesting to see what storylines come about after this match is over. And what's the last thing we're talking about? The Women of Honor match where you have ODB taking on Nanane Takahashi from uh, Shimmer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, that is also, it's not super advertised like the rest of these matches. Um, I don't know. On, we are, there's another Ring of Honor uh, females match that also got advertised t- t- tonight or earlier. And as Mandy Leon, she got advertised in the match. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Let me. Diana Perrazzo, and it's at the uh, Baltimore, Maryland show on July 25th. Which is, uh, I think it's late. Just like we talked the other day with me and him, I think it's a good deal to have some females out here actually, you know, get booked. I mean, I hope, like them or not. I, hope. I know from talking to Maria Canellas in the past on the show, I, I know that they've been going back and forth on this debate on having a women's division in Ring of Honor or not. And I think, honestly, it'd be a fantastic thing for the company. It would be a great spotlight for independent wrestling talent like they did back in the day. How do you think Mia Yim got her one of her big runs uh, on television? That's because of Ring of Honor and because of the embassy. So uh, I really feel like if they continue to go with this one uh, woman of honor thing, it'll be a great, great idea for the rest of the independent wrestling uh, community. Yeah, and it it makes sense for the product because you have to think about how much Ring of Honor is expanding their name. You know, they're on pay-per-view, they're on national TV, they're, you know, still doing their stuff with Sinclair Broadcasting. So you're trying to reach a new audience in in the female audience, which they've been there, but not as, I think, more than ever because Ring of Honor, since its beginning, has barely ever used women. You know, we've seen Daisy Hayes, and mischief once in a while, but we really haven't seen a clear cut women's division, and we haven't seen consistent women's matches happening in Ring of Honor ever since they began. So you have plus, to think, you plus have that's to another util, utilization for Veda Scott, somebody who's been on the Ring of Honor roster for quite some time. Marie Canellis as well, if you want to use her. ODB. There's already a few Ring of Honor or a few women's wrestlers on the Ring of Honor roster, so I mean, it's already think, a good start. I think yeah. girls now this this opened up doors for girls like Candice LeRae who I think did one match in uh, Ring of Honor like a while back. You know what I mean? It it kind of opened it's starting to open up doors. If you want to open up doors, I know uh, uh, Kimberly works for Beyond, but you know, hey, fuck it, work work, work some matches in Ring of Honor too. You know? 
it starts to open up more doors for the ladies, which we talked about the other day, you know. Um, it's a good deal for for uh, women's wrestling. Um, yeah, and especially if Ring of Honor is going to the extent of bringing in women from other countries, I mean, that's a fantastic deal, and hopefully this, like we've been talking about, hopefully the women of Honor, women of Honor thing continues. Yeah. Uh, one more match I want to talk about from Ring of Honor, and then we can move on to NXT. This match has been signed. I'm not sure if you saw, but Adam Cole versus Nakamura going down. This is signed. I can't believe it. I thought it was bullshit. So I went to the Ring of Honor uh, Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Ring of Honor, I don't know what what kind of alcohol or something. I mean, this is a good, some good alcohol, whatever they've been drinking. So this is like, uh, whoever the booker is needs a, a raise. And, and I mean, uh, it's going to be basically. right in front of, it's going to be in front of a Philadelphia crowd that's always hyped for an event like this. And I mean, Shinsuke Nakamura, Adam Cole, this is going to be a fantastic contest. I, I am looking forward to this. Hopefully this makes TV because, uh, I think this will draw some fantastic ratings for the company if it if it happens. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, you have to. You could probably argue that these are two of the most charismatic guys in wrestling today. You know, Nakamura doesn't have to do. He doesn't have to speak or do anything. It's just his mannerisms that have resonated with the people here in North America, and you know, he's probably the most beloved guy in New Japan as far as North American fans go. So should be, uh, I, I mean, a hell of a match. Um, something I think a lot of people have been wanting to see ever since the Ring of Honor New Japan crossover began last year. So should be fantastic stuff. Ring of Honor also signed another match, uh, but this will be in Baltimore. Uh, CNC Factory go against each other. You got Alexander. I guess Coleman, finally. I think we were, we were talking about this today. Um, I think me and Matt was talking about this the other day off uh, air, how when are they going to have those two go at it? I was like, he kind of basically turned heel on, on his boy. And he was like, no, he didn't. He just left the ring. Well, look, there we go. Now we finally get them in the, ma- um, in the match. And this is probably like Coleman's best match, I would say. It's probably like a farewell type match for him. You know, have his tag team, his former tag team partner be his last match. Would you guys agree with that? I definitely feel like we won't see Caprice Coleman used in a more um, uh, promising role in the company going forward, but I don't think he'll be gone from the company. I think he'll be one of those guys that's kind of in for the local uh, dates for what he can do, but I don't think he's going to be done with the company. He's always somebody that's kind of stuck around the company no matter what, and I think that's going to be the same case, but... Uh, I think just another stepping stone for Cedric Alexander. Look strong going into his match with Moose uh, at the Death of Fortis Honor I pay per view. So that uh, should be a good one. Cedric Alexander, yeah. I think he should. Go ahead. I, don't know, I was just going to say, hopefully this leads to, you know, better stuff for Cedric Alexander because it's another guy, much like ACH, where you thought that Cedric was going to get this big push, especially after his feud with Roderick Strong last year. A lot of people thought, man, this is Cedric's time. He's going to get a big push. He has the talent. He has the charisma. He's got everything. And everything just kind of, like, stopped. And he was being used, but people are like, why isn't he fighting for the TV title? Why isn't he TV champion? Why isn't he doing something more promising in Ring of Honor? So hopefully this leads to him getting uh, a well-deserved push in the company. It's been a long time, I think, waiting for a lot of people. Speaking, yeah, like I was going to say, like, speaking of Cedric Alexander, like, I think he needs to go ahead and just turn Hill in the person he's working for. It's, it kind of worked for him after what he did to Candace. So, you know, I think that's going to be like a Hill. Um, and this is on a Cedric subject, uh, you might as well just go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, say it. He'll be in Alpha One. He'll, he returns to Alpha One. Yeah, Cedric Alexander returning to Alpha One Wrestling September on 20th. September the twentieth for No King for Our Crown. 
Uh, it was announced that there will be no King of Hearts tournament at this past weekend's um, uh, last event for Josh Alexander, but uh, there will be a No King for Your Crown event where we'll be crowning a new Alpha Male Champion uh, eight-man tournament. More details at A1 Wrestling on Twitter, and uh, really excited for what Cedric Alexander is going to be doing that trip. Yeah, man. Uh, it's good to see Cedric, you know, do more uh, matches, not just, you know, here in the States, but you know, in uh, Canada also, you know. Uh, I believe he's worked a couple of Smash events. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, he, no, he hasn't been on any Smash events, but, I mean, uh, as you've seen and as plenty of seen, as it's been viewed by millions and millions, and no, I'm not jacking the rock sprays. It's legit. Uh, the Vine of Hem and Candice LeRae from last or last weekend's AIW show. Yeah, uh, last weekend's AIW show. And, uh, yeah, Cedric Alexander has been one of the biggest topics in wrestling for the past couple of weeks. Questions, guys. Do you book Cedric Alexander and Candice LeRae around the world like a different promotions, different any promotions? Do you start to m- make that something? Um, I I think if anything, uh, have AIW do the rematch, but I don't think it needs to go everywhere. Yeah, you don't you don't want to overdo it. You know, obviously there's a lot of hype between what happened at Absolution Ten between those two, but if you book it everywhere, it becomes stale really quick. Um, and that's something you because really you know do. what match. The reason why I said this, the Bucks versus uh, Bad Imp- they did that at a lot of promotions, and you know, some people liked it, some people didn't. Uh, but, you know, it's it's different. You know, tag teams. You, I think you can book like you know the Young Bucks Red Dragon thing and the Young Bucks like Addiction thing that was used in a lot of companies, but. I don't know, like Cedric and and, and Candice, that's built more on one video that happened. So, you know, you can't, like I said, you can't really overdo it or else it becomes something pretty stale really quick and then people are sick of it and then it doesn't become a drawing point for a company. I was going to say, it doesn't even become a drawing point in general. Those two talents just get deplenished because of, if that happens, if just because of the overusage of it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're real quick, gentlemen. Let's um, take a quick break and uh, let's come back. We got a couple of announcements uh, from me and Max. So I won't let Matt go ahead and announce it. But uh, let's be right back. Hey, guys, this is Biff Busick, and you are listening to the Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Hey. This is Biff Busick, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Welcome back. Biff Busick's on a lot of both fucking uh, shows here uh, that are here on uh, the Wrestling Heads Radio at, at the time. Uh, let's go ahead and on uh, Oscar Salazar. He's going to join us as, uh, as uh, Matt. Go ahead and... Uh, Folks know what we just saw on Twitter, and uh, this is shocking. All I have to say about TNA, I feel bad for you guys because you just lost another one. Oh, um, man, okay. That's what we're talking about Oscar. here. All right. Oscar, go ahead. Oscar, what's up? You don't walk what's up, man? I'm glad you didn't put me on hold for nine fucking minutes, but hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> this guy's calling you out. I mean, oh, I mean man's got a oh, my man's got an interview. Man's man's had the interview, you know. He uh, he could be on for a short period well, of time. You so have, you could have put me off when before Matt asked him about the fucking uh, house of hardcore. I'm like, oh, I tried. You know I what? I, you know what? Everybody Matt, bots in this interview. Okay, you could suck it, Oscar. You could suck it. <laughs> I actually, you know what? I actually told Matt uh, that you were on hold, but uh, he went straight to Tom's, so, or, or it was one of these. <laughs> who who? Whatever. What? Anyways, uh, I guess. See it, so we saw it late and you hung up, so that's uh, not our fault it. for hanging Something, up. Man. I but, got a hug for you. But, but we have two, I guess it's two announcements. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Um, go with the, the 
What's up? Oh, What's man. The, the right. uh, you, you're giving me this one. All right. Um, oh, I, man. I, I, I'm going to do take, take both of them. Go, go for it. Cause I didn't see all right. Other. Well, first of all, we're going to talk about TNA being TNA. Now, uh, at the past TV tapings, Hernandez joined the Beatdown Clan. Everybody's like, what the fuck? He's contracted to Lucha Underground. He no, I, apparently told the company he wasn't. Here we are a couple weeks later. And it is now it is now being reported and confirmed by last night's TNA Impact Wrestling uh, taping, or I should say, showing that Hernandez is still contracted to Lucha Underground, meaning that a he cannot appear on any of the segments that were taped for television going forward. B MVP and Kenny King are now without a spot on TV because of this retardedness. And C, we're going to see fucking Slammiversary spots in the spots for Hernandez instead of them actually going out of their way and filming other shit for the spots. What the fuck is wrong with this company? Wow. But hold on. This sounds like more is Hernandez fucked up than TNA no. fucked No. No. They're, well, it's, it's both sides, but it's mainly TNA. Because as soon as Hernandez went to TNA, TNA offices should have contacted Lucha Underground offices and said, we want to use Hernandez on our TV. Is this going to be okay? Is it going to be a problem? Let us know. That is up to TNA to contact Lucha Underground offices and say, we want to use this guy. Is this okay? This is another TNA fuck-up. And my surprise, absolutely not. Because this PR department does not have their shit together. The product on TV is good still. But and that, you can't, that, you motorcycle, can't fuck up in your head. that motorcycle you just heard in the background, that's how fast <laughs> TNA's, or Hernandez TNA run went. Jesus. And I love this quote by uh, Dave Meltzer in The Latest Observer. So here's a quote. He was talking about John Cena. So he goes, Cena's first role in the non-WWE major film is as a former bodybuilder boyfriend of the lead character played by comedian Amy, Schu- Amy Schumer in the movie Trainwreck, which is about her dating life and not about the TNA promotion. So accurate. Died wow. when I saw that earlier. Just died. Um, apparently, they're finalizing their plans for Bound for Glory. I See, I wonder, A, where that's going to take place, and B, if they're even going to be on television when Bound for Glory comes, if they're even going to be able to hype that up for their big pay-per-view, because honestly, at this point, it does not seem like it's going to happen. All right, well, let's put it this way. They're still getting money from international deals, so if they they can't get a deal by December, there's a good chance they will not be aired on the state only internationally, so TMA could but with that so, said, with that, but with that said, a lot of the U.S. audience is the audience that's buying these pay-per-views because the U.K. gets it for free via their TV station. So what revenue are they getting from these pay-per-views if they're just giving no, them away for free, 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 practically? I know that's all they get. And plus, they barely do pay-per-views anyway. I mean... That's what I'm saying. If we get to Bound for Glory, a pay-per-view, and they're just practically giving away for free, how are, how are they going to stay alive if they're making basically no money besides the ticket sales? That's why I said they're in thin ice now, because I don't know if any American uh, network will take them. I, I just can't think of anybody. Spike has got rid of them. They they try to get rid of them. And, and it's the no, fact that the, and it's the fact that they're going to be dropped from two major television networks, that's going to just turn off anybody else to try and well, sign them to their network. Well, I don't know if you guys remember, there's a third one. Remember, they got dropped off by um, Fox Sports West. Remember that? They were on their yeah, that's very true. That's a very good point. Yeah. But I, it's not to nail the, nail the point, but it's just like, I don't know if they're going to be around for the long run. I I am just I am to the point where I am done giving excuses for this company. I am done trying to stick up for them and say anything positive. Listen, 
they have great talent on that roster, but that talent is slowly going away. They're slowly getting out of there. They're jumping off of the Titanic before it sinks. And there's a reason. There's a reason that's happening. Because people are getting sick of what TNA is doing. They're getting sick of not being told that Ring of Honor is going to be on the same network as them. They're sick of not getting their paychecks. It's it, you can't you can't defend this company anymore. You can't. It is They're impossible. They're sick of Vince Russo being a secret writer for the company and not being told about it. Don't forget about that one. Well, uh, I I know we can be on the show ranting about TNA the whole show, but I got some more important shit to talk about. We're talking about TNA, but TNA superstar Jesse appeared on. NXT taping today. Uh, what does that mean? Now, does that mean he's on the NXT? A lot of people are thinking maybe Jesse Goddard, uh, Jesse Sorsen, the guy that broke his neck on TNA. Yeah, and then when TNA promised that they would pay for his neck surgery and ended up uh, not doing it. Classic TNA there. Hold on. I didn't understand. What would you say, uh, Matt? Maybe, maybe, people, maybe where people think Maybe people were thinking that you were talking about the bromance, Jesse, so I was just wanted to clarify before there was any confusion. Yeah, but right. I don't... I wouldn't... I would kind of take this with a grain of salt. It could just be that they needed somebody to go against Baron Corbin, and, you know, Jesse lives in Florida, so, you know, he's an experienced wrestler, so they decided to bring him in. Um, I wouldn't look too much into it, but you never know. Yeah, and, and if you watch NXT last night, they're he's going for they're, they're making a they're turning a, they're turning heel pretty much. They're doing a heel role for him, and his heel role is that he's sick and tired of guys like Finn Balor, Kevin Owens getting in the in NXT. He's like he did something. Well, he's trying to say, well, these guys made money or barely made money. Just, you know, they made money for you know for a hot dog and, and soda, but I was making money. You know. You know, prior to WWE, pretty much saying he's better than all of them. So basically, he's got—he's he's taking charge of these guys in the spot. He's gonna take it from them. So that's new character, you, pretty much. What it is. Are you talking about that bum? Which we don't talk about bums. <laughs> I don't know who brought him up. I think Sunday brought him up. Bum is saying out there is a new character. He is a guy that. Looks like they could put him as a world title contender because if, when Owens leaves, who's going to be their top heel there? I don't think they're going to put in. Um, um, I don't care. I already said Finn Balor it, goes here. To be honest, I, I think as much as I hate to get off the NXT topic, I think there's something we have to talk about. A big, big rumor going on for this Sunday's Battleground show. Actually, two big rumors, I should say. The return of the vigilante Sting and the and Undertaker. The Undertaker? Yeah. Well, this is what I'm hearing. There's a lot of shit going on. This talks about Taker could either attack Brock Lesnar for breaking Kane's ankle, or you know him and Sting can have a you know. I've also heard even Seth on. Rollins. I've heard Seth Rollins. Yeah, because I'm hearing all this crazy stuff with the Undertaker, which they're going to do for the next few months. Like, I'm hearing SummerSlam, maybe him and Brock, him and Sting. Um, I'm also hearing possibly Kevin Owens against Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. So I, I, I saw that too. The, the way it looks like to me is possibly they're, they're going to make Undertaker and Sting at SummerSlam. Because it seems like they want to book more subscribers. So... Bring more, how to bring more pressure then, you gotta bring in people like, you know, or make it seem like you never know who's coming. So if Undertaker come out of Battleground, holy shit, you know? I'm gonna you take know? her Brock match, to be honest with you. I'm gonna take her Brock match. Uh, hey, I would not want to see that. Wow. I would I love to see that. I would love I, to I, see I've seen it. I've seen it enough, and their last match was absolutely We've seen it once. Dreadful. I would love Forget. to see Brock, or sorry, Seth Rollins versus The Undertaker. I think that would be I'm, fantastic. I would love to see that too. And Brock Lesnar, Brock, Brock Lesnar Undertaker doesn't make sense because Brock Lesnar's a face now. 
and you can't put Undertaker as a heel. Yeah, you can't. No, well, you can't. It, it only makes sense if it's going to be at WrestleMania because you know Whoa. he's the one to end the streak. Taker might want revenge, and that's what that's how I see him. You know, that's how that's the way it makes sense for me to have a scene Undertaker Brock match. It has to take place at WrestleMania. It, it doesn't make from, sense to have that match at SummerSlam. From what the dirt sheet said, they said there's a possibility Taker can go heel, but then also they're also you know saying that the fans. Reaction would uh, they they will probably hear from, but they but, but I did. There see. is absolutely zero percent chance of Undertaker being a heel. I am sorry, wherever you read that is completely wrong. They said they yeah. would like for him to go heel. They will they would like for him to go heel, but knowing that the fans' reaction would be different. I I, I don't know, but that does not. Exactly. I'm not saying you're an idiot, kid, but that does not sound any. Uh, like I said, I'm not the one writing shit, so you. I'm you're not gonna throw an idiot. I think it's gonna be Sting. I think it's gonna be Sting and Taker, and everything time else out, stays the same. Time the fuck out. You don't need to call me an idiot. What you need to do is find I, out I, who wrote I, shit I, I, and call I, them an idiot. Guys, guys, did I call Skip an idiot? I said I'm not calling you an idiot, but it's not a. You know, it doesn't make sense. Hey, Skid, stop getting oversensitive. It's okay, man. I know. <laughs> right, listen, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is going to lead to the big Undertaker Bo Dallas match. Bo is looking to avenge his brother. <laughs> Bo is going to avenge his brother, and Undertaker, he's going to Bo leave. Uh, oh, my God. I'm going to throw it out there right now. I think plans stay the same. All you have to do is Bo leave. Hey, Skins, you can suck it for kind of be off. But anyways, uh, I think we get Sig and Taker. I think we get Triple H and Rollins. And I think we get Brock and Reigns. I think all three of those matches go down at SummerSlam. I, 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 I'm I, going with Matt on this. I, I, that's where I look, look, look like where it's going. They're trying to make SummerSlam a bigger event than it was before. Uh, they're making four shows around there. Hell, that makes you want to go to SummerSlam next year. If, it, if, if there are moves back to L.A. next year. Hmm. It's very interesting because you have those rumored matches, but then you have to think, where does that leave John Cena? Where does that leave Kevin Owens, Cesaro? Dean John Anthony? Cena? You know where that leaves John Cena? That leaves John Cena, Kevin Owens, and Cesaro in a triple threat. That's where it leaves them. Yep. That's what I, I agree 100%. Me might even throw Rusev in there and make it a four-way. Fuck it. I'm, yo, I'm kind of with that, too. I mean, Dolph Ziggler is... Oh, yeah, Ziggler's supposed to be back for SummerSlam, so you do Ziggler and fucking Rusev for SummerSlam. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Fuck Ziggler, so that I'm sorry. That's how it is. Either one-on-one or mixed tag. I, that's what I see. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that... if that's the case, SummerSlam's going to be a fantastic show, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting, you know, you know, it's just, you know, it's rumors at this point, but it's still interesting to think that, you know, Taker and Sting could possibly be back in the middle of the summer when usually we would only see them, you know, once a year, and that was it. So um, very interesting stuff happening with this, and we'll just have to, you know, wait for, you know, wait for Sunday. Just think about the city of New York. They have wrestling shows five straight they have something put on Thursday. I forgot what it was. Friday is House of Glory. Ray Mysterio against Amazing Red, if I'm not mistaken. Saturday is the book NXT and Steel of Honor. Sunday is fucking SummerSlam. And then they're having Monday Night Raw at the Barclays Center. That's crazy. I think I'm ready. Yeah, and don't, don't forget about Evolve uh, the week before. Yeah, that's week before. But I'm saying five straight days of wrestling in New York. That's crazy. Can't wait! I can't wait. Damn! I mean, if I was in New York, I'd be like, God damn! <laughs> I can't wait. It's gonna be, it's gonna be my maybe my little, uh, my little bola over here. <laughs> Have fun. Have fun. Yeah, should be, it should be interesting. But I'm still trying to get out to Cali, so <laughs> I'll do both. I'll do both. Good luck. 
So, also tonight on the NXT um, taping, someone else returned. I don't remember this guy. Maybe you guys can refresh my memory. But uh, I, I see a lot of folks going going nuts over this dude. And um, uh, it is Martin Stone. Yeah. Uh, obviously he's been kind of an evolved, I don't want to say regular, but he's been there quite a bit. Um, he was you know what? At, now now few, that you said evolved, those, that just came back to me. WWE in live rumors a little bit more, WWE. That just came back to me now that you said Martin Stone. Yeah, the, yeah. But you said, now that you said Evolve, that, that name just came back to me by seeing his name in some of the, the, um, the, um, matches that, you know, he had from us doing predictions and shit. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting when these NXT TV tapings happen because even if, it's like a dark match or something or something that doesn't appear on TV. You're getting a lot of guys and girls now getting, getting shots to get into the WWE. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, another weird thing that went down on NXT tonight, I noticed was for some reason they decided to bring Charlotte back to NXT again to face against Dana Brooke. Is this necessary? Do we need to have, like, 10,000 Charlotte Farewells from NXT? Does this need to be a thing? Well, she's well, going to be a, She's going to be down there for a while. She's Her and Sasha are both going to be at TakeOver, so they're going to be around for a while in NXT. It's not like they're on main roster already. They're basically doing what Kevin Owens did. Yeah, and I got to take over that day. They're all gone. I mean, whoever they're going to plant Sasha against for the title, that person's going to take the title from um, Sasha. Let's not forget, um, Paige and Emma both worked both main roster and NXT for a while, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. We see where Emma we, we see the difference, though, with having to Emma. Yeah. I mean, it's like... Like I said, it's, 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 I mean, all because they made the main roster this past Monday Raw doesn't mean they're not coming in a key next week. Or, um, you know, they, it's probably like a little month or two and that's it. They're, they're done and they've got to fix up the women's position in NXT. Shout out to Skits' dog, I believe. Shout out to Titus O'Neil. Uh, <laughs> you can hear that? Hurry, hurry, hurry. That's the dog next door. <laughs> I'll think that, uh, uh, the guy, uh, I'll think the guy that escaped from the Mexican prison that was coming the whole time. Uh. This guy, this guy right here. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Willie Mac's going to ring of honor, yeah. We covered that. Sorry, bro. I know, I'm late. But yeah, and I'm fucking pissed. I'm not going to see him there, so. At least you're admitting it. Skits is like, eh, I don't care. I'll be at another show that night. But come on, any show you're going to that night, and I hate to say it, but even if it's PWG, man, I, I think that Ring of Honor show looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'd rather go to that show than the show we're going on Friday, but oh well. I, I, I got to ask you guys. With Austin Aries being back on the independent seat, do we see him in PWG? Who knows? Possibly. Possibly. It'd be great to see him back in PWG. If anything, maybe in summer of 2016. I don't think right, not right away. Like, what if we see him? Because we've seen in the past where people have showed up unannounced full of weekend. Do we see that happen? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're not even done announcing matches uh, for uh, the next PWG show. The like, it seems like it's not that many matches announced. So I feel like they're not done. Yeah, I believe there's only like four announced. Yeah. So 
Yeah, that's definitely something uh, to know. Since we're talking um, independent wrestling, I'm gonna go over House of Hardcore's matches. Some of the matches that are already booked. You got probably the main event, the Young Bucks going against Team Three, aka the Dudley Boys. Uh, that should be crazy and nuts. Two of the best tag teams in the world. And speaking of the Dudley Boys, since we're on the Dudley Boys, uh, I I was going across uh, Twitter and I. Uh, I clicked the Dudley Boys want to come back to the WWE. Uh, they still want to come back. Uh, you guys' are thoughts on that? My my thoughts before we get into that. Did anybody see Billy Ray cal- calling out some dude on Twitter the other night for cussing out Velvet Sky and like inviting him to his school and uh, offered to pay for his flight and all this shit just so he could kick his ass? Nope. Um, what did uh, what did I the guy say to Velvet? Mentioned. What did the guy say to Velvet Sky? Oh, uh, something Sir? about something uh, dick or something like made a hope. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, just escalated quickly from there. Well, you know, Bully Ray has now gained the prominent role of a TNA general manager. So um, yeah, you know, he's got a lot of power now. <laughs> Hence the sarcasm. This guy literally went out of his way and is sitting there tweeting this dude saying, uh, you know, calling him a bitch and saying Velvet's punking him like a bitch and like giving him the uh, address for the Team 3D Academy so he can email, telling him to man up and just like making fun of some random kid on Twitter because... He made some comment behind the keyboard. I don't. I don't think he should be taking stuff like that so seriously. And it's like I. I. If what if Bully Ray did that to everybody that said something negative about Velvet Sky, there'd be a lot of people showing up at the Team 3D Academy. All I gotta say for him doing that. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> But to get back on to your note, man, I, I sorry to derail the topic a little bit. Um, House of Hardcore this coming weekend in Toronto. I, I will the be. Dullies. Damn it. Yeah, you were, you were talking about the Douglies and Young Bucks, weren't you? No, I said the Douglies, uh, they want to return to the WWE. You guys oh, just fuck it. Less. Fuck that. I've heard it for so long. And they they dropped the ball when Eric Rowan and Luke Harper were doing the 3D. I I don't want to see it. Yeah, you know what? Um, if anything, I can see me appear once in a blue moon, like you see Hogan appear once in a blue moon. Um, I I like to see him bring him bring him back if they have a team that they feel high on and they want to feud against a legendary tag team. Then that's it. Might as well give him a fucking legend deal. That's it, and put him in the Hall of Fame. Fuck it. So? I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. Worried, I'm not worried about veterans coming back. I would rather see young talent be utilized. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Like I said, when they dropped the ball with the whole putting Eric Rowan and Luke Harper over, and you know all the times that they requested on Twitter and trying to get themselves back to WWE by fans before. I don't know, it's just gotten to the point where it seems like they're begging to the back into the company instead of actually being yeah. the fans. Shout out to that truck that honk, by the way. That wasn't me, that was uh, not me this time, but I don't know. Nah, I don't know about that. There's no truck around me. Kazarian and Daniels versus uh, the Kingdom. Could it be a good match? going to be a good match. Uh, talking to Tommy when uh, we were talking House of Hardcore, he said he built, uh, booked this match in the first place to have the IWGP Heavyweight cha- Tag Champions to take on the Ring of Water Tag Team Champions. Unfortunately, the Kingdom still uh, aren't champions anymore, but uh, the idea going into the match, obviously, two of the best tag teams in wrestling going at it, so uh, great booking from here. Yeah, should be, should be a pretty good match. Um, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect anything, uh, like, bigger significant to happen in this match. 
it's still going to be a really solid match. I, you know, I look at it as it's going to be probably like a like a Ring of Honor style match, but there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so I agree with good. Oh, okay, sorry. I, get, I agree with Tom. He's gonna be like a Ring of Honor type match, um, even though it's not in Ring of Honor. It's a House of Hardcore event, but um, yeah, it's gonna be. It's like a, it's like pretty much if you're at a ROH show, you're gonna you're gonna see you're gonna see what you're gonna see out there. Nothing different, you know. It was like some kind of gimmick match. You'll see something different, but oh well, that's that's what it is. That's how it is. You got Tony Nese versus Johnny Mundo. It's actually first Mundo. time ever. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Nice has kind of uh, fell off. Of- at least, you know, the, the Evolve. Well, he's been on the Evolve shows, that's what I meant. Besides the Evolve shows, he really hasn't been at PWG like he used to be. Uh, he really was, hasn't been in a prominent role like he used to be. And I, I feel like this is going to give him a chance to kind of step up and uh, get back to those roles on the independent seat. So hopefully he has a good match with Mundo on Saturday because I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it should be a very, very good high-flying match. Um like I said, I don't have a problem with Tony Nese. It's just that, to me, there's nothing that stands out about the guy. Maybe it'll change with this matchup, but I don't know. Like, there's he's he really hasn't done anything to kind of separate himself from all the indie talents that have been stepping their game up the past couple of years, and I think that's going to hurt him. But this is a perfect opportunity to change that perfect opportunity to show people that you still, you know, you can go and even though you've lost some momentum in the past six to eight months, you can get right back on track. So, let's see if Tony needs You want to talk about momentum? I think Jenny Mundo has a lot of momentum. Not just backing him up because of Lucha Underground. I really think he's been putting on great matches. I mean, at first when I used to go to Lucha Underground, I would boo him. But, like, he just starts up his game with having good matches. So, uh, uh, I like what I see. That's just me. And uh, no me doubt, and Matt had no a conversation can, last night. No doubt you he definitely stepped it up since leaving WWE. Um good stuff from him and hopefully uh we see it again this coming Saturday at House of Hard Four. Another match going down at the event. Tommy Dreamer versus Chris Hero. Chris Hero, yeah, going against Tommy Dreamer. That match is gonna be uh nuts. You know, Tommy was Tommy German one of the toughest son of a bitches in professional wrestling? And Chris Hero probably one of the best wrestlers in the world right now. Uh, these two are going to go at it. Uh, it's it's going to be nuts because Chris Hero can definitely take anything. So, pause. I'm t- I no, will take anything say, I, I, I don't have a lot of negative <laughs> stuff to say about House of Hardcore, but this is one of them. Chris Hero right now is on fire, and he's been having great matches. If you're going to book him, I feel like you need an opponent that he's been working with, like an Evolve and PWG. You need a technical guy like a Zack Sabre Jr., a Timothy Thatcher. You need somebody like that that people are going to watch and really enjoy the match. And it's nothing against Tommy Dreamer, but if you're going to be booking a guy like Chris Hero, I think you need kind of a more his-style opponent. Um, It should still be a good match, but I I just feel like when you're booking – these big name talents, you want big names against them. Yeah, I agree with uh, Tom. I mean, unless they're planning to have um, just something that we don't rarely see Chris Hero does, like some kind of hardcore shit. Because when I look at Tommy G, I, I look at him as a hardcore guy. I still see him doing hardcore type matches like he did in ECW. Um, unless they're planning to do something with Chris Hero, the hardcore thing, then it's interesting if you could do it in you know, a hardcore style match. You know, I don't. I think I think the reason why House of Hardcore booked this is because of the uniqueness of the match. I don't think you'll see this match anywhere else at any promotion. And with the matches you guys are bringing up, like the Zack Sabres Juniors and the Timothy Thatchers, I think we've seen enough of that from Hero this year to where he can have one of these matches where he's just, you know, doing whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I would just, bet. I, I'm under the impression oh. that if you're – because think about it. If you're – if you're going to House of Hardcore, you think, you know, you're watching these Evolve events, you're watching PWG, and you're like, man, he's having these great matches against Trevor Lee and Zack Sabre Jr. and Beth Busick and Timothy Thatcher and all these guys, and then you see him against 
Tommy Dreamer and a lot of, I think, pure wrestling fans, which is what House of Hardcore kind of draws toward is these pure wrestling fans. They're going to be a little disappointed in the sense that it's not going to be the I same style. I think you're fine. I'm going to tell you why. I, I think I disagree completely. I think I'm, with it not being one of the main attractions of the show, I think uh, Dreamer and uh, Hero are going to play their role perfectly. I, I don't think you need too yeah. much of a big match out of those two. I don't I, I, honestly. I don't, I don't think you'll see any hardcore in it. I think it's going to be a hard hitting match. You know, you're going to see basically Chris I, I Hero, think, you know, throwing those, I think you throwing two those are elbows. The, and, I think you two uh, are doubting the uh, ability of Tommy Dreamer at his age as well. He's somebody that could still go. He's somebody that could still bump. So uh, I, I expect this match to be very decent. Right. But you got Rhino. Got a, he has an open challenge going on. So. Uh, We'll see who who uh, who who's going to answer that challenge. You know, will it be in the Canada area? Could it be uh, Ricky Shane Page? Could it be uh, could it be um, Ethan Page? You know, could I will say I was going to say two guys booked on the event that it could be from the Ontario area, being uh, Ollie who Ethan Page and the hacker Scotty O'Shea. So, uh, very very interesting if one of those two happens to answer the challenge. <clears throat> Interesting. Maybe it could be Ethan Page. Maybe uh, Matt Ray knows. I do know one thing. Knew. I will shed some if light Matt on knew, something. I, know. I will shed some light on something. I do know another match that's going down at this event. I believe it's going to be Eddie Kingston taking on Tommaso Chapa. Ah, yeah, those two are that's actually really, uh, that's be a really good match. Both of those guys are actually there, and they do not have a magic book, and it makes common sense. Any wrestling fan can tell you that Eddie Kingston and Tommaso Ciampa will be facing each other because there's only only two guys, single wrestlers, that are left that I see. That are, no, there's uh, still J.T. Dunn, there's still Pepper Parks, there's still Ethan Page, there's still um, there's a few other guys as well still left on that roster. Uh, that, I don't uh, see a uh, lot of what J.T. Dunn and Pepper Parks makes sense too, to have them jail too. It makes sense. And you gotta go where it makes sense if you're a booker. Uh, Team Tremendous, of course, they'll be there. Shout out to Dan Barry once again, and that's how. And I'm you, still ha- for our, you still our, have you still have the the last wrestling appearance Tracy as well Brooks. for Tracy Brooks. Yes, so that that's something else. Plus surprises. So Tommy Dreamer, House of Hardcore, doing a big big event this oh, weekend. Oh yeah. He always does surprises. Sandman, like, like, Sandman will be Sandman showing up probably. Yeah, no, if Sam, you, you, are you kidding? Sandman actually has to get across the border, man. Come on. Well, yeah, I mean, how many how many former ECW guys can actually get across the border uh, legally? Probably very. Yeah. Probably yeah, yeah, when it comes to surprises, you never know who could pop up. Like when, last year, when Rey, or last time when Rey Mysterio came out, this is when he barely got his release in the WWE. No one thought Rey Mysterio was gonna come out. Rey Mysterio, Alberto El Patron made a fir- I believe his first WWE post appearance there as well. Uh, there was a few. You guys, know, so. I'm 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 thinking something because Matt's not telling us who Rhino's special uh, par- uh, opponent is, and Matt's <laughs> interviewed Rhino in the past. Could our own weekly wrestling podcast affiliate member Matt Grant answer the open challenge and make his in ring debut? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting gored. Sorry, I'm sorry. He's gonna rip him. You know what? I'm gonna put it on record, and I'm gonna say that maybe not answering that open challenge, but I believe a double Austin Aries will be in the house of House of Hardcore on Saturday. I'm calling that one. Yeah, that could be a very possibility. Now that you know he's released from TNA and all that, that could be a scary possibility. But yeah, House of Hardcore doing doing great things. Always good shows. I like. Like I said, I like what Tommy Dreamer's doing with the shows because you get a good mix of the old school plus the new school going on. It's not just the typical ECW, you know, hardcore reunion shows that have come and failed in the past. Tommy Dreamer, he knows progression. He knows the business. So great stuff from House of Hardcore. Can't wait to see what happens with this event. And just before we go into plugs, I wanted to kind of get into one more topic because it popped up on my feed uh, not too long ago. The final... Um, page in Daniel Bryan's book. I don't know if anybody's seen this, but it's probably one of the most depressing things I have ever seen in my entire life. I don't know if you guys want me to read it out really quickly, but uh, if it's something you guys want to go check out, uh, I believe it was Death to All Marks. 
who who uh, retweeted it. So definitely recommend checking out that page. It's really, really, really depressing. Go for a reader, bro. I don't All mind. right, let's do, let's do it. Now going home isn't the same, and there's nothing I can do to make up for all the time I've spent away from my father. Instead of being proud for all my achievements, all I feel is regret for not being there for the most important people in my life, the people who have loved me in a way that had nothing to do with wrestling. If you were to ask me today if all the reward was worth the sacrifices, I would say no. Yet I keep on because I'm not quite sure what else to do with myself because stopping now wouldn't give me any more time with my father. The last time I saw my dad was Christmas of 2013. My sister came over to spend the holiday with us along with her two daughters and her husband. My dad came over and he was so excited he was going to be able to play with Santa for play Santa for the girls. We had a good Christmas dinner and shortly afterward my dad went in to get dressed. We were all in the living room and when we were where we had a sliding class door, and all of a sudden we heard bells ringing. My oldest niece, her ears perked up, and she turned to my sister and said, Mom, it's Santa. My dad came in on his in his Santa suit saying, Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. He played the part really well, and his eyes were beaming as his two granddaughters came to sit on his lap. When he left, we gave each other a big hug, and he told my sister and me how happy that night had made him. I will never forget that night. While I was at the funeral home seeing my father for the final time, one of uh, Darby's daughter gave me a box my dad left for me. When I opened it, it contained a silver bracelet, presumably a gift he got me for the wedding. And cry on the front were my initials. As I looked on the back of the bracelet, I started crying even harder. My dad had been cried to the man you become, to the man you become, and the son you'll always be. Heavy, heavy yeah. there. I mean, that was tough. You just. Uh, I, I think especially with what's going on now with with what Tyson Cade's going through and, uh, you know, we've been kind of talking on and off about it, but, you know, that situation in itself is terrible that the guy is probably not going to wrestle again considering less than 5% of the people that have the same injury don't even survive or either become paralyzed and Tyson Cade is walking. You know, the guy is... Uh, basically a walking miracle and he's tough as nails but then you you because we never know what's going on behind the scenes with these guys what they're thinking what they're going through it's it's heavy stuff yeah that was about Daniel Bryan right yeah that was Daniel Bryan's uh, final page in his book uh, really just talking about his father and the relationship he's ever had with him yeah, and you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's very interesting. You know, make me want to like uh, grab the book. You know, maybe uh, read. You know, a little bit about Daniel Bryan's uh, book. The last wrestling book I bought was actually the Shawn Michaels one. So, uh, I, I'll look and it actually just it just got released too. So I recommend checking it out if you guys get the chance. And I know these things aren't really related, but I I, I think about that. And then I look at Tough Enough and how most of the competitors in there don't give a shit. They want to be in this business to be something else. And then you have a guy like Daniel Bryan who busted his ass and sacrificed everything and anything to get to where he is today. And it pisses me off when I look at people at Tough Enough who 90% of them don't give a shit. They're just to be in this business to help themselves. And it pisses me off to no fucking end. Yeah, I mean, if anything, that Patrick guy should win the damn thing. He seems like he really wants to get in there. I mean, Hogan says, call, kind of called him out. He was like, okay, he wanted to learn from Hogan. So, but Hogan is the man. I mean, without Hulk Hogan, we probably wouldn't even close with the damn show, to be honest. So, you know, if anything, I would like that Patrick guy to win it all. Patrick is like the pure wrestler on Tough Enough, if we're talking about Tough Enough. Uh, I know Matt has something against Tough Enough, but they've done a lot of shit uh, this week. This week they uh, were showing uh, people how to pick up people, you know, and drop them basically, and uh, how to do a shoulder uh, uh, bump. So you've heard uh, me say it in the past, kids, and I'm just gonna say it again to alliterate it. It's nothing wrong with the show. It's what's gonna happen with the people after they come off the show, and it's gonna be absolutely. Well, I like what Lena said. I really like what Lita said about her mentioning um, 
I hope you guys actually, you know, something comes out of out of uh, two of these superstars this year. I mean, with her saying that, basically kind of made me say, I don't know, there's a possibility we might actually have somebody that wins the show actually go to development and learn how to be, you know, learn a little more, maybe become a, 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 a excuse me, WWE superstar. So I really think somebody might come out of this one. Like, for some reason, Chris Jericho went off on this chick, Sarah Lee. Like, he really was pissed. Like, he was so fucking mad. Like, he's like, I'm not fucking laughing. Like, because the girl's laughing, thinking Chris Jericho was joking. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely feeling tough enough right now. That's just me. Like, uh, it's it's a little different than the one last year, but this tough enough is pretty interesting. Yeah, I hate it when guys like ex football players who didn't make it try to be me in the business, and you know, and they don't know shit about it. You know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if how Baron Corbin was a fan before, or that one dude, uh, that squash guy. I forgot his name is. Um, was a fan before, but I mean, I just see like you guys are failed football players, you know. They're they're some of them, no, like most it, most are successful. Yeah, and there there is nothing wrong with being an ex football player and wanting to get into wrestling because some of the best wrestlers were former football players, guys like Bruiser Brody, the guys Rock. like Hanson. You know, these the guys Rock. were in football and translated well into wrestling, but they had a passion about it. It's about yeah. Boy, it's about Lester. how much you want it. It's it's Brock not about Lester. trying to elevate your career to but something like else. It's say, about having passion for pro wrestling. Like Skitza say, Brock Lesnar, there's guys like Roman Reigns, Goldberg, and there's so many more we can name as well. And, uh, Don't forget I about agree. the people's champ. Yep, the people's champ, Rocky Maivia. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, I think, I even think we're pressure. <laughs> And Farouk. Well, we're having a long oh, yeah. show today, shit, because we're all early, shit. Um, this is just one of those shows, like, I think we should go You really want me to load uh, this whole show for a long time on YouTube? I know, we all know Oscar. Uh, this guy's giving you heat early, over so. He doesn't like the three yeah. hours, like, like, uh, like, uh, some other people, but it's cool. Um... I'm gonna start with Mac. You you have long plugs. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. Yep. Can, can, I, can, uh, can I start start with a plug for a second? Because I gotta like do something. But let me start off real fast, okay? Um, you guys can follow me at Sinister Six Thirty Two at uh, Twitter and Instagram. Um, now I'm on Periscope. You can follow me on that, and I hopefully you can check out Wrestling Heads. You can follow Wrestling Heads on Periscope as well. Uh, maybe tomorrow, me and Skip would be Periscoping when we go to. Um, Brian Kendrick's show tomorrow night, so you want to check it out. Maybe Tom could check it out and see what the how we do always do every fucking time we go to the show, and we should do it next week when we go to PWG. But you guys can know how the line, you know how the, what we do in the line and all that shit. And there's a little preview from Matthew Grant, and uh, you know now you give you know now you can know what you do, how it feels like. Um, yeah, and check out WrestlingHeads.com and. Um, I guess that's all I could give up right now. Oh, Triple A, baby. Um, Triple Mania. Get ready for that. Um, Alberto El Patron. Hope he shows up going against uh, <laughs> Brian Cage. <laughs> he has to show up. <laughs> going against Brian Cage, hair versus hair. We might see Brian Cage with a new hairdo in Bola. Um, and the supposedly dream match. Uh, Mr. Seas, a.k.a. AKA the original Sin Cara against Rey Mysterio is happening. So... How many matches have you seen that match? You know what? To be honest, he hasn't botched since he came back to AAA. I mean, not that he came back, but since he joined AAA, he hasn't botched. All right, we'll see how that match does. Um, you good with the plugs there? Yeah, I'm done. Um, yeah, I'm done. So go ahead, man. All right, it's going to be a busy one this weekend for the Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Follow us at Weekly W Podcast as we'll be providing live results for both House of Hardcore 9 and Smash Wrestling Rival Schools going down in Toronto. Big show for them as they have the Smash Wrestling Championship out for grabs. The current champion representing Fourth Gun, Johnny Gargano, defending against the hacker Scotty O'Shea. We have another big match going down as Hero requested to go all night long, so he'll be taking on... Rich Swan, Rich Swan versus Chris Hero going down at Smash Wrestling. 
We also have an I Quit match as Tarek, representing Fourth Gun, will be taking on Matt Cross. Uh, we have a tag team tables match, which seems to be a rival school's tradition, as we have the Super Smash Brothers taking on the Guild Brigade. Uh, we have another big contest as we see Kevin Bennett returning to Smash Wrestling to take on Brent Banks. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big show going down at Smash Wrestling. A big tag team match. Not too sure if Fifth Music will be in the house, but it's scheduled to be him and Drew Gulak of Fourth Gun taking on Sebastian Swamp and John Green, the Overdog. So, I mean, that and so much more from Smash Wrestling. Really recommend checking out both events in Toronto this weekend with House of Hardcore, House of Hardcore 9 and Smash Wrestling Rival Schools. Uh, big one for us, so follow us at Weekly W Podcast. Check out our interviews with Jeff Jarrett, Tommy Dreamer, and so much more. YouTube.com backslash Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Wrestling Head slash WWP slash Indie Power. Support the Elite Podcast Network directly. Uh, we're on the Periscope app as well. We've done a few things on there as well. So uh, follow us at Weekly W Podcast. That's pretty much it for uh, my folks. So take it away, Skids. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at 2 tweet. That is my personal account. So make sure you follow me on there. Um, everybody else, give up the plugs, but make sure you're checking out all the rest of the people here on the Elite Podcast Network. Brand new Uncle Mike and Tom show dropping today. Eyes on the Ring are going to be on Sunday. Of course, Wrestling Heads is live every Monday and Thursday. And Indie Power Rankings is live every Tuesday and Wednesday as well. So a lot of content going on here on the Elite Podcast Network. Make sure you guys are going out and, uh, Checking out some indie wrestling if you never have before. Smartmarkvideo.com. High spot. Guys, guys, I hate to cut you off, but breaking freaking news. Jushin Thunder Liger at NXT. What the fuck? Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. What? <laughs> no word of a lie. <laughs> wait, what is going wow. on? Wow. Anyway, crazy. that's. At That's the same all. Night in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn at Takeover, no lies. Holy shit! But anyway, like I said, make sure you guys are checking out some of the indie content. Lots, lots to choose from from SmartMarkVideo.com, HighSpots.com, wow. uh, Smash Wrestling on Demand, AIW Archive. So much going on. Um, but that, that's about it for me. Skits, uh, take it over, man. By the looks of it, I'm like looking at pictures. It looked like he's gonna go against Tyler Breeze that night because Tyler Breeze is looking oh, at I, Titan Tron. Yo, I am getting tickets for this fucking thing when they go on sale. And if we don't see on pictures, we're gonna be pissed. I'm telling you straight up, I'll be pissed. I I'm trying. Like I said, the only thing stopping me is finances, which you know that's I think that's the main reason that stops people from going to wrestling shows. But I'll see. I'll see, and I'm hoping. Hoping pretty hard to go, but uh, let's finish I have one off. One more thing before we go off here: is this the reason why they put uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but the guy from uh, Japan and the uh, they give him a legend deal? Is that why? Because he can get Japanese guys over, like like uh, like a uh, Lager? I have no idea. Listen, if Jushin Thunder Liger is going to appear in WWE. Who fucking knows what's going to happen? Like, nothing is off limits. All I got to say, this is, if you're having a roster chat tomorrow, I'm on it, and we're talking more. Um, but um, fuck the dog in the background. Uh, I am <laughs> WH6, and you can follow me on Twitter. You can also uh, follow at Wrestling Heads. You can follow Elite Podcast Net. That is the Elite Podcast Network's Twitter account. Um, Oscar basically put out the website. It's prowrestlingtees.com backslash wrestling heads. Um, I think I'm going to do this Periscope thing. That's WH Skits, too. And um, what else am I missing? Am I missing any, any plug that you think I should post? Uh, I think that's it for right now. Um, Willie, next week on Thursday. Put that in your fucking calendar, people. We'll be talking to him. So, uh, thanks again, Gary, for coming here on the show. 
And um, until next week, I'm Skits. That's Tom. And that's Matt. Peace out, motherfuckers. Hey, Bye, guys. Bye, guys.